Hey y'all, Jay Wilson here from Onyx Reporting. I'm the lead data strategist and uh, trainer, I'd say, at um, Onyx Reporting, and I'm also the voice behind all of these blog posts. Uh, I, I had a little bit of time before, between now and my next client. I really wanted to share with you this project that I'm working on with actually three clients at the same time. Um, and all of my clients, they're Jet Enterprise customers, and they said, you know what, Jay, we've got this really awesome cube, we've got these dashboards that we want to create, but we really don't want to create them using pivot tables. Are there alternatives? Uh, they're not quite ready to jump into Power BI, um, and they also don't really want to use Jet Professional to build their reports. So the alternative that I'm showing them is um, functionality that's built natively into Excel. And what we're going to explore today are some of the cube functions. So I've got a link to um, the Microsoft Developer Network or the support uh, cube functions reference guide. I've got a blog article that somebody else wrote um, that actually does a really good job of covering cube functions and I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. Um, here are the cube functions. If you go into Excel and type in equals cube, I think they go back as early as 2010, these cube functions. All right, so what are we looking at? Well, the first thing I'll do is I'll insert um, I'll put together my pivot table. And I'm just going to toss together a really quick pivot table showing cost amount and sales amount by salesperson. Nice and easy. Maybe I'll add in a slicer. Why not? If you're not familiar with slicers, they are the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> um, they give you the ability to, um, oh, I don't want that one. Let me do item because there's no data here. Um, they give you the ability to rapidly apply filters to your pivot tables in a very visual way. Uh, so I can just click on an item and apply filters. Super nice, super easy. All right. So this is good. This is exciting. Um, it kind of falls apart, though, when I start trying to do calculations outside of the pivot table. If I say, well, I know sales amount, I know cost, I really want to know profit, and what is profit? Profit is sales minus cost, and then I want to copy and paste down, and it's just... Look at this function. This is horrible. Get pivot data. Step one, as, as, as much as possible, I recommend do all your calculations in the cube. Create structured measures in the cube. The reason why we even bother with creating cubes is so that we can predefine our measures so everyone in the organization is doing everything the same way. While profit is pretty obvious, sales minus cost, not everyone agrees on how you calculate profit margin. Some people say sales minus cost divided by cost, and other people say sales minus cost divided by sales. Regardless of if you're actually involved in sales, the point that people can calculate a measure that seems pretty common different ways is problematic and so I would always say do the work in the cubes instead of in Excel. But if for whatever reason you have to build your function in Excel, look at this get pivot data mess. This is horrible. So the alternative I present, and this is what I'm actually doing for clients, is I'll say okay instead of building a pivot table, one, get your pivot table dashboard about 75% there as best you can, and then here analyze OLAP tools, convert to formulas. And now we've replaced all of the um, pivot table, we've replaced the pivot table with actual Excel functions. So here I'm going to highlight these numbers in yellow, and I'll highlight these guys, not that guy, these guys in green, not you. 
Okay, and let's toggle between showing the function and showing the value. You can see the yellow ones are cube value functions, and the green ones, cost amount, sales amount, and the salespeople are cube member functions. So what is a cube member? It's a way of slicing the cube. Usually, it will be a dimension member or a measure. So let's take a look at that. What do you mean by a measure? Well, the cube has a measure called cost amount. And if I wanted to, I could say, well, just kidding, I don't want this to be cost amount. I want this to be, let's say, average profit. Notice when I start typing, um, Excel has IntelliSense. So it can say, oh, here's a list of all the different measures that you could choose from. So I'll choose and put in average profit. And now I'm showing average profit. I can go back to showing cost amount. <clears throat> and that's really cool, right? Because now I have these functions, I have control over formatting, and I don't have to be bothered with this get pivot data nonsense anymore. I can just say, you know what? I want to do real, normal, old-fashioned Excel math sales minus cost divided by sales. And I'll pretend like that's profit margin. Uh, your slicer still works. Well, it works, it just happens that there is no data. Okay, your slicer still works. Um, the way you expect it to, it's still connected to this cube value function. And the reason why it's still connected to the cube value function, let's look here. The cube value function is actually very straightforward. It just says, what's your data source? So what are you connected to? I'm connected to something a connection called the cube. And then everything else are going to be member expressions. So you have a cube member, another cube member, you can have more cube net members, and you can tack on any slicers that you want to be able to slice by. Piece of cake. So the cube value is actually the easiest part of the equation. I showed you that you can change the name of a cube member. And let's take a look at our guy, John Roberts, here. So here's the dimension. Here's the uh, dimension attribute. And there's the value. If I'm saying words that don't make sense, that's OK. Here, let's open up a new pivot table here, our sales pivot table. These are the measures, right? So when you drag in cost amount, that's this measures.cost amount. When I drag in average price, sorry, when I dragged in average profit, we just swapped out average profit, piece of cake. Okay, now when it comes to dimensions, anything here, these are all the various different dimensions, and the dimension that we used was salesperson on document, salesperson code. Salesperson on document, I lied salesperson on document twice. <laughs> this guy. Okay. Now, what happens if you say, oh, just kidding, instead of showing salesperson on document, I want to show date. The easiest way to do that would be to say, all right, well, what if I just drag in posting date? Where are you? from the date YQMD hierarchy. And let me expand the node here. Okay. So when I drag posting date into my pivot table, if I convert it to formulas, I can see here, this is a cube member. And I guess I could theoretically, let's just do 2016. Um, I could copy the cube member 2016 into my pivot table 
I could either put it in as a filter and now I just have to you know hook everything up to that cube member so I'll say oh just kidding I also want you to filter by the year and I'll copy that across everywhere and now when I change things from 2016 to 2015 you can see the values update there's no sales in 2017 2016. Cool. Uh, if you want to, you could say, well, what if I want to be able to filter by quarter? So instead, or, or month, let's do month because everybody understands months. Uh, if I change the word month and do and 2016, that obviously doesn't work. There is no month called 2016. What is the proper spelling for a month? Let's look. 2016-09. So I could do 2016-09, or I could do 2016-01, which is where all the activity is. Okay, so really all I'm demonstrating here is that it's really easy to change a cube member if you know the correct spelling for the dimension. So if I wanted to do quarter, 2016-01 should be Q3. And yeah, sure, I get the same numbers, but that's just my limited data set. Again, if you don't know the right spelling for a dimension, the hierarchy, or the values, show it in a pivot table and then do convert to values. Piece of cake. Now, here's uh, JRPS and this idea of the grand total. Let's talk about JR first. Um, if I were building this report for a customer to make it as dynamic as possible, I would hard code these values here. Sorry, not Annette Hill, Peter Sato. I would hard code the values to the left. And then here, I would, instead of hard coding the name in the function, I would use a cell reference to pass in the value for the name. So when we read this through, you know, once the Excel magic is applied, this will read as salesperson on document dot ampersand square brackets JR. And I get the same result. What's nice about that is when it's time to add a new salesperson, can just insert the row here, copy all of this down, and just change this to the next salesperson. Now I get a pound value here because of Excel math problems, you can't divide by blank. Um, but it's worth knowing that you have to spell the salesperson's name correctly. I mean that sounds obvious, but you know, let's just put it out there. You have to spell the salesperson's name correctly because if you misspell it, you get an NA because HA does not exist in my data. Annette Hill does. Annette Hill just doesn't happen to have any sales for this period of time. Cool. All right, I'm going to talk about an edge case um, where I built this report. I literally built a sales report just like this for a client, and then they started to get fancy on me. They said, you know, Jay, this is good, but I have these custom groupings that don't exist in my source data. They said, I have a JR, a PS, and a net hill, but instead of seeing it like this, the way I would like to see it is I would like to see it divided by regions. So in the region northeast, I have JR and a net hill, and in the region called corporate, I have PS. Yeah. Let's take one step back. First off, if you have custom groupings, get them into your cubes. 
Um, there's really great developers out there, myself included, um, that can help you get custom data, custom groupings that don't exist in your, in your ERP into your cubes, because that's really where it should be done. Barring that, we do have the ability to create what are called cube sets. So Northeast is a set of salespeople. It is JR and Annette Hill. So what I could do is I could say, let's make some space here. I could say that JR and Annette Hill are these people. I'm going to delete all the content here. And then um, let me get my cube member function back. So here's my cube member function pointed at JR. Here's my cube member function pointed at Annette Hill. And what I'm going to do in this guy, uh, I'm going to define a set. And with this cube set, I just need to say, what's my connection? I think it's called cube. What's my set expression? It is the combination of John Roberts and Annette Hill. These are my set. And I'm going to give it the name called Northeast Custom Group. I have this cube set called Northeast Custom Group, and you can see right here the cube value function. It's happy to slice by a cube member or by a cube set. And the same story applies when I have to create a custom group called corporate that is Peter Sadow. I can say OK. The person is called Peter Sadow. They are the cube member from the connection called cube. The member expression is salesperson on document dot salesperson on document dot ampersand open bracket close quote concatenate concatenate close. I just wanted to show you that it can be typed out by hand. You can copy paste. Okay, so here's my cube member for Peter Sadow and he is a cube set using the connection called cube. The set expression is just the cube member and we'll call this corporate. And then I just need to copy in these cube value functions. This is empty. And I can delete these guys because it's not necessary. Okay, so what did we do here? Um, we created custom groupings using cube set. A set is a combination of cube members. I didn't want to use the, 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 the word in the definition. Uh, yeah, a set could be a, a set of cube members, and that's exactly what we did here. We said, oh yeah, um, this cube set called corporate custom group consists of Peter Sadow. Um, and then as soon as we need to add a new one, we just insert a row here. We'll put in our new salesperson. I don't know of any other salesperson, so I'll just recycle JR. And again, we would just say, oh yeah, just expand this set to include John Roberts. 
and off we go. Okay, um, I want to take, sorry I'm tossing so much out at you guys. Um, this guy here is kind of an outlier. I, I, I'm not sure I would recommend using it. Um, but here you have a cube member called salesperson on document. And we have the all salesperson on document. We have what's called the all member. And what the all member is, is it is literally every member in a dimension. So um, the all member is every member in a dimension. If you think about it, filtering by the all member is the same as not filtering. What did he say? Here's his cube value function. This cube value function is showing the cost amount for the all member sliced by items and date. And we get the number 51742. If I don't filter by the all member, so if I take out C40, I should get the same result. So filtering a cube value by the all member is the same as not filtering by the all member. And arguably not filtering by the all member should be faster or just about the same. So I guess what I'm saying is don't apply superfluous filters. If you don't have to filter by something, there's no reason to filter by it. That, that just kind of sounds obvious, but is worth saying. <clears throat> All right. So what do we do? We looked at cube member. A cube member is just a way of slicing the cube. Um, and that can be both dimensions, so salespersons, posting dates, inventory posting groups, global dimension codes. It can also be the name of a measure, so cost amount, profit, percent, um, sales amount actual. We looked at the cube value function, which is the actual calculation. Um, and then we looked at a cube set, which was a combination of cube members. Okay. Um, we looked at creating custom groupings using that cube set functionality. And lastly, we took a look at the all member. Okay, um, this report or this spreadsheet, when you look at it, doesn't look like much because it doesn't look like a functional report. But what I wanted to show here is an alternative to pivot tables. More importantly, um, I wanted to show what happens when you try to create these um, calculations that are, exist outside of a pivot table, right? We saw that get pivot data mess and how difficult that can be. So by using the um, convert to functions ability, um, we, we give ourselves more flexibility, not only in creating custom calculations, but also in creating these custom groupings. One of the challenges that I have with clients is they'll frequently say, Jay, you know, it'd be really great if I could auto apply some filters. So I want a report that shows me the last five weeks of sales or the last week or the last day of sales. That functionality could be built into a cube. Um, it is not necessarily a non-trivial thing if you don't know how to do it. Um, but what I hope you can walk away with here is if you've got some good Excel knowledge, it might be a lot easier to say, oh yeah, I know how to write a today function, or I know how to write some, some volatile functions based off of the system clock, and I can much more easily recreate the functionality that I'm looking for in Excel with a greater degree of flexibility than a pivot table. I mentioned here that this is an alternative to Jet Professional. Jet Professional does in fact have cube functions in it. 
So if I open up my function wizard here, and I change my data source to my cube, Um, you'll see here there is a nl cube value function, and you would tie an nl cube value function to an nl rows function. So there, there is overlap between what Jet Professional does and what you can do manually in Excel. And for me, it's just about, you know, it, the more tools you know about, the more options you have, and that's really why I put this presentation together. My name is Jay Wilson. Um, I'm a the data, lead data strategist and consultant over at Onyx Reporting. Uh, if you have any questions about what we just went over, email me at jae at onyxreporting.com. Check out our website, check out our blog, and uh, hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.